Good afternoon, and welcome to the Brookings Institution. My name is Stephen Bennett. I'm the Vice President and Chief Operating Officer, and it is a pleasure to have you all here today. A uh, little bit of housekeeping. Ple the, uh, this event will be held principally in French. To listen to the event, there should be a headset on your chair. In English, use channel two. French, please use channel 10. If you have any issues or if your headset isn't working, please see one of the Brookings staff up at the uh, front of the room or out to the side. Um, now, it is my great pleasure to welcome to Brookings uh, President Fosson uh, Archange Touadera. Um, it is, uh, he is the president of the Central African Republic. I'd like to first thank uh, our co-sponsors of this event, Mercy Corps and Search for Common Ground. Uh, they've been terrific partners and uh, they've done outstanding work on dialogue and community reconciliation in the Central African Republic. So uh, President Tuadara, uh, thank you very much for being here. It is a, a pleasure to host you. Um, your, uh, my colleague, Amadou C, the director of the Africa Growth Initiative here at Brookings and his colleague, Amy Copley, uh, they focused on the Central African Republic for several years now. Um, the, uh, starting in, uh, in March of 2014, uh, at the height of a uh, sectoral and religious violence, Brookings hosted um, this, this, some religious leadership from the Central African Republic. Then uh, later that year, I had the great pleasure of introducing to another audience um, interim president Catherine Samba Panza. Um, in October of 2015, we had political leadership from both the United States and the Central African Republic to talk about the path forward. And, and, uh, and around that time, Amadou and his colleagues published a very good paper um, on the path to stability, uh, principally through community-based peace building, which prioritizes economic recovery. So before I uh, welcome the president up to the stage, I, I'd, I'd like to just reflect on, uh, on one thing. The, the news from the Central African Republic that you get in, in the United States and in Europe is largely bad news. Um, and that is, uh, that, um, that's really regretful. I'm, I'm regretful about that and because there is good news to share. The bad news is about uh, the, um, the political crisis, uh, uh, regional strife, um, human rights abuses, UN abuses, but the situation is not as bad as I think the president will lay out for you. The situation is not as bad. On the Brookings website, um, uh, one of our, our partners here, Search for Common Ground, uh, one of their staff members, Larry Wohlers, has written a blog on, uh, on Central African Republic, a, a piece that just went up this week. Um, and uh, he lays out some, some reasons for hope about the Central African Republic, and I'd, I'd encourage you all to read it. It's a very, very interesting piece of work. Um, despite uh, the challenges facing the Central African Republic, uh, the peaceful and legitimate elections that have brought the president to power and brought uh, a, a modicum of, of peace um, and stability to the country uh, is, is cause for the whole donor community to um, to take some cheer. And there, there will be a donor conference coming up, which is going to be the subject of uh, a lot of this talk. Um, and uh, it is against that backdrop that, um, that I think we can be glad that, uh, that President um, Tuadere uh, has, has come to power with a great deal of legitimacy. So it is my pleasure to introduce uh, the President Tuadere. He is a PhD in mathematics uh, from the University of Yaoundé in Cameroon. Uh, and so as a PhD, you will find intellectual kinship here at the Brookings Institution. Um, you were a professor and administrator at the University of Bangui uh, from 1987 until he became uh, prime minister in 2008. Um, after a brief stint in exile, he came back in 2014 and was elected president this year. So uh, without further ado, let me welcome to the stage uh, President Tuadere and welcome to Brookings. Thank you very much. Mr. Director, Mr. Ambassador, distinguished guests, 
Ladies and gentlemen, I have a great honor and a real pleasure to talk to you today for the first time on behalf of the Central African Republic and on my own behalf in front of the eminent representatives of Brookings Institution, I have the pleasure to talk directly to the political genius, the social genius of the American people. I would like to talk about the developments in my uh, country. This is uh, a solemn moment, and it's an honor for the Central African Republic. And it, this is why I would like, on behalf of the Central African people, my gratitude and thank you for the opportunity that your noble institute has bestowed upon me. This shows the consideration that you have for my country, the Central, Central African Republic and my modest person. Allow me also to thank His Excellency Barack Obama, President of the United States, and the American people, our friends, for the warm welcome that I have received and my delegation has received since we came on this beautiful land of the United States and particularly here in Washington for uh, its hospitality. The Central African Republic is grateful for the personal involvement of His Excellency President Barack Obama, involvement in our stabilization and in our peacemaking during the crisis. And also, let me seize this opportunity to thank the organizers of this initiative. My country appreciates greatly these kinds of meetings. These are promising meetings uh, for the recovery of our economy and also for peace building in my country. And uh, we would like to thank you very much for this initiative. Mr. Director, honorable uh, personalities of uh, Brookings Institution, and ladies and gentlemen, our history has always been marked by crisis. The young republic lost its uh, founding father, Bartholomew Boganda, who died on March 29, 1959, in a plane crash before our independence was proclaimed on the 13th of August in 1960, and he contributed greatly to our independence. And of all those crises, the one in 2012 and the one in 2013 were the most bloody. Religion was used for violence uh, between Muslims and Christians. And this crisis was uh, marked by violations of human rights, the destruction and the looting of public and private property, and the destruction of uh, the economic fabric, and this brought about uh, a humanitarian crisis without precedent. This crisis lasted three years and really made the state of Central Africa fail. This caused disunity in the country and broke the fabric of the country. I still remember extremely challenging moments, atrocious crisis, the destruction of the state, about one million displaced people in their own country and 450,000 refugees in neighboring countries. And fortunately, the civil society nationally and internationally was able to sensitize various international organizations and the international community and friendly countries mobilized themselves through different forms of aid to mitigate the suffering of these people 
who have been crushed and uh, help us in our effort to rebuild national cohesion. But this difficult situation did not prevent Central Africans to go beyond uh, their capabilities and to take their destiny in their own hands. The government, the political class, civil society, and the people have demonstrated their willingness uh, to close this dark chapter of uh, our history by uh, holding presidential and legislative elections that were free, democratic, and peaceful across the country without any strife, and they were able to elect a president at 62% of the votes. And I am that humble servant. And uh, this is one of the best uh, exits from conflict. So I committed myself once I uh, held office to build a country of peace, of security, a country that's concerned with the search of cohesion and justice, uh, a country that would be economically strong, where corruption would be the main enemy of the government, a country that guarantees a space for freedom to the economic and political actors. In summary, I have committed myself to building rule of law in my country. After I took the reins of power, I appointed the prime minister and set up my government. And the National Assembly is uh, working right now. I started the restructuring of our armed forces uh, so that we can have a democratic and inclusive military. I also committed myself to sustainable peace, and I started a dialogue with the armed groups, and we started a DDR and a security sector reform project in order to establish security. In terms of national reconciliation, we have set up a commission of truth and reconciliation, which would make sure that the country is indivisible and so that communities can live together. The government has set up a court system that has become functional all over the country so that justice can be rendered effectively and close to the citizens. And uh, government authority is functional all over the country with the help of the international community. In terms of economic recovery, my second priority is the cleaning up of uh, public funds, uh, the restructuring of the customs, uh, the securing and uh, the organization of auditing systems for major corporations. And I want to launch the development of sectors such as mining, communication, agriculture, and also the improvement of the business climate, because the business climate uh, is one of my priorities. We launch reforms to promote investment and to encourage the development of a dynamic private sector, a competitive uh, and a job-creating private sector that would reduce poverty. Eminent guests, ladies and gentlemen, if the efforts of all the partners, including the United States, have allowed the CAR to move forward, we also have to recognize that we have a long way to go violence uh, that occurred uh, recently in the hands of the enemies of peace in certain areas and the exaction committed by the Joseph Comey's Lord's Resistance Army and uh, the rebirth uh, of uh, 
the axis of evil, these people who are causing violence, settling scores, all that shows us uh, that uh, the situation is uh, fragile. We need the input of everybody for social cohesion, for consensus, for dialogue among the people of Central Africa who all love freedom. Coming here, ladies and gentlemen, coming here in your great institution, we come to get strength from you, from your political, social, and economic know-how, but also we came to convey a message, a message of hope. We come to get strength from you because uh, your institution is well known and has a tremendous experience in scholarship and in building economies, in humanitarian uh, policies, in governance, uh, in foreign policy, world economy and development. You have demonstrated that uh, democracy can be strengthened, uh, security can be strengthened, and that opportunities can be found here in the United States. I will not uh, forget the securing of uh, an international system, more secure, more prosperous, more cooperative. What a lucky country uh, America is by having such an institution. So we come here to also strengthen our economic and social cooperation and political cooperation with the United States. We want the lifting of embargo on weapons, uh, embargo imposed on the Central African Republic. And we want to train our military so that uh, they can start their mission, mission predicated on the integrity of the territory, the, of people, and of property. We also brought a message of hope and uh, friendship because the Central African Republic has some assets for sustainable development. Indeed, we have a geology, a hydrography, a climate, agricultural potential, forestry potential. So therefore, we have tremendous opportunities and tremendous potential. We have no coast. We are in the heart of Africa. We have 623,000 square kilometers with about 5 million people. We have borders that we share with six countries, Sudan, South Sudan, Cameroon, Chad, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, and the Republic of Congo. This country is tremendously rich in natural resources, but that are not well developed or not enough. We have tremendous mining resources, according to the World Bank. Uh, in a study in 1995, we have 470 mining sites, and the partial lifting of the Kimberley process would open that uh, industry. We have iron, copper, gold, diamond, and hydrocarbons. We have four petroleum sites that have been identified, and between one and five billion barrels that have not been exploited, yes. In terms of agriculture, the country has 15 million hectares of farmland, and only 1% is being farmed. We have about 2 million cattle, and we have 16 million uh, areas where they can graze. We have more than 5 million hectares uh, of dense forests, and 3.5 million of them have not been uh, developed. And we have uh, rivers, and all this uh, is opportunities for tourism, hunting, fishing, and energy production. Uh, in addition to this post-conflict uh, si political situation, we have had some uh, progress, uh, like, for instance, uh, the GDP went from minus 36% uh, in the middle of the crisis to 
5.2 in 2016, and the inflation went from 6.6% .6 in 2013 to 3.9% in 2016. This performance was uh, made real thanks to the efforts of the Central African Republic government, of our friendly countries, and the international community that I would like to thank very warmly. We had different forms of aid, and this has brought back peace and constitutional legitimacy. But you will agree with me that the situation needs some support, support on the part of the international community. That's why the CAR is uh, closing this uh, dark chapter of crisis. Uh, we have come back to constitutional order. We have a National Assembly that's fulfilling its role. We have a government made up of technocrats representing the various political forces of the country, civil society in all the regions of the country. And so the CAR is on the right track. And that's why I encourage you, I implore you to come to our country. Let me, I, I cannot conclude without inviting the United States to take part to the Conference of Donors for November 17th, 2016 in Brussels so that we can uh, pledge some uh, funds uh, for the Central African Republic. I wish the U.S. good luck uh, in the next elections and long live the cooperation between the United States and the Central African and long live Brookings and uh, May God bless our respective countries. Thank you. I'd like to invite you to have a seat, um, dear President. Bonjour, Monsieur le Président. Bonjour. Uh, C'est un honneur que de vous accueillir uh, ici. Good morning, President. It's an honor to welcome you here today uh, for this initiative for the Africa Growth Initiative. Thank you again for joining us. I would like to take this opportunity to greet the audience as well as the representatives of the diplomatic corps who've joined us here today. I'd like to tell you uh, that we all are Central Africans. And so my first question for you, if you will be so kind as to respond, I'd like you to try to um, perhaps bring us into the mindset of a citizen from Kar, who doesn't live in Bangui, perhaps, who lives on the border of South Sudan, or Birao, on the border with Chad. Perhaps describe what this person from Birao or Dubu has experienced. How did this person experience uh, the crisis that you mentioned? And with uh, the efforts of uh, the community, with the, the church, as well as other religious uh, communities, how did such a person uh, overcome this situation and survive? And how uh, were certain services uh, continued to be provided? Mr. President, from Bangui, how are you going to strengthen dialogue with citizens in the Central African Republic who are so far from the capital? How do you support uh, their efforts and their endeavors? Thank you. This is a very important question. As you know, 
one of our main priorities, as I mentioned in my introductory speech, we really want to focus on national reconciliation. We want to make sure that all Central Africans can have social unity, can regain social unity, and can live together. One of the measures we have started to take is to go out and meet these populations and to have discussions with them. The populations that you mentioned who are far from uh, the capital, and as you know, the Central African Republic is very vast. Consequently, since I took office, I have tried, we've tried to go in, out and meet these uh, fellow citizens. We've been to Bois, and there we had discussions with our uh, uh, fellow citizens from Bois in order to try to really grasp what their main concerns are. We also went to Kakabandoru, a region in the center of the Central African Republic. And here again, uh, people live in very difficult conditions. There are still armed groups in those sectors. And this, uh, in turn, has enabled us to meet these people, to have discussions with them and conversations, and also to have discussions with uh, the leaders and the representatives of the main communities. It's very important to have this contact with the population and to speak with them, to talk about peace, to talk about them with them about the new vision that the government is putting forth and what we are offering. And we would like them to embrace this uh, process of peace and uh, reconciliation. We went to Bria. Bria is located in the east of the car. And um, we were welcomed warmly there. And we did the same um, exercise. We met all of uh, the leaders of the armed groups that have set up in that sector. And we were able to speak to them directly. We were able to tell them about our vision for this uh, disarmament um, process that we are asking them to uh, support. And it's, in, a, in some ways, it's a way of taking the pulse of the population in order to understand what their needs are, what are their immediate needs. We we're also pleasantly surprised uh, to see uh, how vital this population is, how motivated the population is to come back into the fold, to come back into the Central African Republic, who wants to leave the situation in which we find ourselves. And after this, I, I felt a great deal of encouragement after having been in touch with the population. This teaches us a lot of things. In these particular regions, we met with populations and communities that were divided but are now living side by side again. And this demonstrates that social unity or social cohesion, cohesion are not just words. I was accompanied uh, by members of the international community, including the ambassador who is here alongside me, uh, as with, with others as well, in order to uh, have discussions with our fellow citizens. We also went to Sibuts, and we're going to continue this. We're going to continue to stay in contact with the population and to reach out to them. We went to Obo, and that happened early on. And I would like to thank um, the ambassador, because before I took office, as you know, the United States, uh, through the American Special Forces, have been assisting us in Obo to uh, fight against uh, the Lord's uh, Resistance Army. The Lord's Resistance Army has been uh, threatening the population in that particular region. And in order to uh, root them out, we have the support of uh, the United States. And we also have troops from the Uganda, along with our troops, who are attempting to protect uh, the population and to fight against the Lord's Resistance Army in that particular area. This, in turn, enabled us to identify what were the key preoccupations of our population in that context. And based on these various visits, we are able to truly take the pulse of the population and to take stock of the situation in order to understand uh, the issues in the field. And those are just a few examples of some of the initiatives that we have launched. In addition, we also have discussions with uh, the representatives of these various regions who are deputies, uh, who are parliamentarians, and uh, we meet with them on occasion in order to discuss these matters. 
as well as uh, representatives of the state live in these particular regions. And so here, here's a response to your question. President, we're going to leave Obo and we're going to come back to Washington, uh, perhaps via Brussels and Paris. I'd like to talk about Paris, in fact, where on November 17th, excuse me, uh, in Brussels on November 17th, there will be an international, the International Donors Conference. In Brussels, uh, President, Mr. President, how are you going to achieve this balance between the aspirations of the people of the Central African Republic and the requests or the ideas, or should I say initiatives, of the donor countries? Brussels will be a key moment in our country's uh, program. As you know, we are exiting a crisis. And as I mentioned earlier, this crisis destroyed uh, the economic fabric of our country. There are numerous problems. Um, there have been sections, uh, uh, buildings that have been destroyed, and our population really faces a great deal of insecurity. Therefore, when we go to Brussels, we are going to be asking friends. We are going to be turning to our partners who wish to help us. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the people of Central African Republic have demonstrated, have clearly indicated their ambition, their commitment to leaving this very difficult situation. As I said, they are committed to it. And so despite the very challenging conditions, uh, the people of the Central African Republic went to the urns. They voted in droves in order to elect their leaders. And they've taken many other initiatives. I talked about their willingness, their open attitude when we visit them. The population wants to live side by side. They want to have social unity, but they need support in achieving this. And that's what we're going to ask our partners to do. We're going to present uh, priority projects to our partners, projects for which, if we can have the necessary support, this will certainly help the population um, to really take charge of its destiny. But what you must keep in mind is that the people of the Central African Republic are committed. They are determined. And as uh, the president of the CAR, well, I've received this message. I've heard it loud and clear. And I want to be able to transform this into facts. And I want to help the population exit from the situation. However, we do need some support in terms of finances in order to mobilize resources so that we can launch the priority, priority projects that we have identified. And this is what we're going to be doing with various partners on key issues. The challenge is monumental. We're not going to be able to meet all needs, but we're going to have priority projects. And these priority projects will serve as drivers for other projects in order to achieve national reconciliation, to have a reform of the security sector, to have the DDR, disarmament, de-escalation, and reintegration. And we also want to be able to provide basic services to our populations. And that's what we're going to discuss with our partners, and we're going to invite our partners to support us with these projects. Now we're going to go to N'Djamena or Kinshasa, or perhaps even Yaoundé, to talk about regional integration. You have six neighboring countries, neighboring countries that are not always well behaved, but they are your neighbors. So how are you going to strengthen regional uh, integration in this particular area? The Central African Republic is part of uh, the Economic and Monetary Community of the Central Africa, the EMCCA. So what are your projects in terms of strengthening regional integration? I'd like to remind you that um, the goal of the Central African Republic, its aspiration, is to really live peacefully side by side with all of its neighbors. And we have gr good relations with all of our neighbors. As you rightly said, today we are part of a community. We are part of the uh, East uh, African community. We are part of the EMCCA. We have regional programs, uh, economic programs on which we work. And in fact, we have received a lot of support. 
during the time of crisis. Earlier, I mentioned that there are uh, 4,500 4, people who are refugees in neighboring countries. As you know, when there's a massive displacement of the population, this is problematic for the neighboring countries as well. Yet these neighboring countries welcomed uh, the displaced populations. And they are welcoming our co-citizens who now live in those countries. This certainly testifies to the harmonious uh, existence that we have with our neighboring countries, with our neighbors. And we are continuing to work in the context of community building because we cannot live alone. Therefore, there are many community-based program programs. We have the economic, uh, the economic regional program that we support. In fact, recently, there was an extraordinary uh, summit of um, the EMCCA that focused on the Central African Republic. And uh, the countries in that community decided to provide us with their support to demonstrate that they have our back, that they support us. They provided financial assistance as well as support in order to promote the, the restructuring of our armed forces. And these are issues that we are going to examine, examine with the international community as well. All of this to say that we are part of the community uh, of Central Africa, um, the East African community as well, both of which support us. When we were leaving the times of crisis, they supported us. They even sent troops. And in the context of the MINUSCA, these troops uh, provide security, they provide uh, civil protection in the Central African Republic. As you can see, we really have uh, a solidarity-based uh, community with our neighboring countries, with um, the EAC and the EMCCA, and even with the Union, African Union. We've received a lot of support in these difficult times. And in fact, we received support from the entire international community. And I'd really like to give my heartfelt thanks. I have many other questions, uh, says the moderator, but we have a lot of guests here, and we would like to give them the opportunity to ask their questions as well. I would like to know whether you were able to resist the temptation of visiting a mathematics uh, department while you're here in the United States. Were you able to visit a mathematics department? Well, that is certainly something I'd have liked to have done. I would have liked to have read at least a few publications uh, just to try to keep abreast of things. As I, I do continue to provide a, a few classes, to give a few classes, and so it would have been interesting to visit a few bookstores in order to look at a few mathematic manuals. Unfortunately, I'm very short on time uh, because I have a very, uh, very busy schedule. But as you mentioned, if I come across a bookstore and I have the time to do that, I will certainly do that. Uh, well, we could have, you could offer internet courses from uh, Bangui. All right, so we have a few questions. We generally ask questions, one from the right, one from the left, uh, to make sure that it's a balanced uh, Q&A session. And um, we'll take a few questions, uh, and then we will uh, give time for the president to respond to them. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. It's always wonderful to see you outside of the amphitheater setting. Uh, Mr. President was one of my professors, and it's thanks to him that I learned uh, differential equations. He's a very demanding but very fair teacher. Uh, Mr. President, I'd like to address uh, national uh, reconciliation. In a family, when brothers argue or when they fight, this means that there's been an unequal distribution of resources, or this can be caused by the fact that the share of the pie is so small that everybody's fighting for the same uh, share of the pie. So in the context of the Central African Republic, even during the crisis that the country weathered, I went to Bangui several times and to the outlying regions, and I realized that there are not really any inequalities in terms of the regions. There are no poor regions and then uh, rich regions, as you might see in other African countries. 
there are no extremely wealthy uh, Central Africans, there are no uh, extremely poor. So inequality in the Central African Republic is not as marked as in other uh, African countries or in other regions of the world. Therefore, this issue of national reconciliation, in my opinion, is an issue of uh, social and economic progress first and foremost. Uh, the issue of poverty and making sure that everybody uh, has opportunities. So it's not by organizing discussions that we're going to resolve the issue, but I think rather it's by making the share of the pie much larger. This brings me to my question uh, regarding national r reconciliation, which is a process. In your opinion, how important is justice and the lack of imp impunity, rather, in this process? We're going to hear two other questions, if uh, you will, uh, Mr. President. Uh, good uh, afternoon, Mr. President. My name is Godi Shekambu. I work with uh, an American, or, uh, American NGO. And we support and encourage uh, development in rural areas as well as poverty reduction in general in Africa. Recently, uh, some of your compatriots came to us. Les Mamans Centrafricaines, the moms from Central Africa, their goal is to support various reforms that you uh, initiated with the aim of reducing poverty and promoting uh, national reconciliation and also to bring development to rural areas. We have prepared a document for you. We know that you have a very busy schedule. However, prior to your departure, we'd like to know whether it would be possible for you to grant us five minutes of your time, along with the Maman Centrafricaine, the moms from Central Africa, in order to project this document and this uh, project. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, Mr. President, I would like to ask you whether there will be, uh, uh, will you be welcoming American Peace Corps volunteers in your country? Will you be, I'm sure you're familiar with this program, the, the Peace Corps program. Uh, Mr. President, you had quest three questions. Well, let me respond to the first one, uh, the last one first, which is the simplest question regarding uh, Peace Corps. And I'd also like to grab this opportunity. As you know, the Peace Corps these are people who I have worked with for quite frequently, and I've seen how they have assisted and contributed to development. I see, I've seen how they've worked in difficult conditions, but I've seen how these people work very closely with the population. My wish, if I might say so, is to be able to welcome the Peace Corps to the Central African Republic and the ambassador will bear witness. The first time I saw him, the first time that I met him, I asked him, I said, what about the Peace Corps? Can we invite the Peace Corps? Can we receive assistance from uh, the Peace Corps in the Central African Republic? On a personal note, as an educator, I have worked with the Peace Corps. I've been in the field with uh, the volunteers for various other projects, and I've witnessed the effectiveness of the Peace Corps. I've seen how the Peace Corps truly works very closely to the population and truly assists uh, them and really meets the needs of our populations. Therefore, what you were requesting, it, it was a request. It was a very strong request. But unfortunately, I have not received a positive answer yet. I continue to pressure the ambassador, the US ambassador, so that we can implement uh, a Peace Corps mission as soon as possible in the Central African Republic. And I think it will be very useful for us in this phase of reconstruction and recovery uh, of uh, my country. This is a very important uh, form of cooperation. The Peace Corps is a very good partner. And unfortunately, for the time being, we don't have Peace Corps, or perhaps we're not eligible yet uh, to be able to welcome the Peace Corps. And yes, that is uh, something I regret deeply. So I believe you had a request, uh, Madam, that you requested, that you submitted. 
and uh, this is certainly uh, the type of issue that we support. And I would be happy uh, to grant you a few moments of time so that we can talk about this project uh, aimed at uh, benefiting our country and promoting national reconciliation. Now to the first question regarding the role of justice. The priority for the Central African Republic is to instore peace. Peace is the main priority. And if you will recall, I said that uh, peace is first and foremost about the DDR, disarmament, um, demobilization, and reintegration. Much of our territory is currently occupied by armed groups. Some of them have decided to lay down their weapons and to return them. And we're currently in negotiations with them in order to achieve this process. Secondly, as I mentioned, because of this crisis, we no longer have um, a defense force, a security force, a national armed forces. We need to rebuild the armed forces, which is a very important aspect of any nation state. And currently, we do not have any armed forces. Number three, we need to achieve national reconciliation because the crisis, in an artificial manner, um, had communities turn against each other. And there are some, there's some anger that remains. At, the, at some time, we thought it was a faith-based crisis, which it actually was not, for the very simple reason that we met with religious leaders, and they created a group, a platform, in order to firmly state that this was not a faith-based um, conflict. And in fact, they went to visit the various regions of the Central African Republic. They risked their lives in order to convey this message and to convey this vision that it was not a faith-based conflict. Therefore, we need to rebuild the communities so that people can live together. This was a very violent crisis. There was much destruction. People lost their goods. They lost family members and loved ones. Some fled. Therefore, it is my belief that in order to achieve a reconciliation, we need to recognize the rights of the victims. We need to acknowledge that they have lost much. And in order to do this, we can only turn to justice. Justice will be the cement that holds this reconciliation together. And in fact, this was clearly stated during the forum that was organized in 2015. This was clearly stated by all of the delegates and even uh, during the grassroots consultation. Everybody said that they wanted to have zero impunity. And that is what we are currently working on. We are working with the government in order to strengthen our legal system so that we can have an independent uh, judicial system with uh, trustworthy people who can truly um, implement law. This justice is not something just for the people. It's also we want, we're asking partners to assist us. We want to be able to ensure the legal safety of our outside partners. And in order to do that, we need to have an independent judicial system so that uh, the legal system can really contribute to the country's uh, stability. That is why we really emphasize the notion of justice and strengthening uh, the legal system, the judicial system. And that's why here with the U.S. Department of State and other partners who have uh, welcomed us, we've asked them to help us strengthen the capacities, to build the capacities of our uh, judicial judiciary so that it can truly fulfill its uh, mission. And this is extremely important, this notion of justice. We wish to build uh, a state of law that's based on the rule of law. And the population has clearly stated that. And as the President of the Republic, I'm firmly committed to this. I'm endeavoring to build um, a state based on the rule of law, a state in which democracy, freedom are applicable to all. We would have very much liked to continue this conversation. Unfortunately, we are limited by time. We were supposed to stop at 3 p.m. Therefore, I'm going to ask uh, the president whether you wish to uh, stop now or do you have a few more moments? I know that you have a very busy schedule. Uh, I believe there are a few more people who would like to ask questions. Perhaps we can field a few more questions. We have the gentleman in the back uh, who's had his hand up for quite some time. Uh. 
in the back there and then in the middle. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. My name is Jean Manegakiza. I am working with the African diaspora. I come from Burundi. I have two questions. What is the role of the Central African diaspora in your projects? And secondly, in terms of the constitution in Central Africa, I have heard that uh, there is something about your terms. In other words, uh, you don't want to be glued to the presidential seat forever, are you? In the middle. Bell. I'm with the Committee for Free and Democratic Equatorial Guinea. I'd like to salute you for demonstrating that the rule of law, good governance, and stability can take place in Africa. As you know, uh, the president of Equatorial Guinea is Africa's longest serving dictator. I know it's a delicate situation, but what would you do to urge African leaders who have overstayed their welcome <laughs> and done so to the detriment of so many others? For those of us in the diaspora, what would you recommend, either gently or through diplomatic language, individuals such as Teodoro Biang, Ali Ben Bongo, and the tragedy that's happening uh, in Gabon? What can those of us who respect what you do and represent the uh, winds of change, what would you recommend that we do in order to help about, bring about stability and democracy in countries like Equatorial Guinea? Thank you. I think we got the point. I will take le, uh, the monsieur au milieu. In the middle there, gentlemen. My name is Mbui Tananganda from the DRC, your neighbor. Excellency, allow me to congratulate you for your election. It was not an easy task. This illustrates a certain leadership, a certain courage on your part. You had tremendous courage to accept this uh, challenge. But I have a question. You inherited a challenging situation. But why didn't you think about, from the get-go, about an emergency plan, so a three-year plan, to stimulate the economy. You talk about the meeting of donors. Uh, you're going to have a list of projects. But don't you think that you're going to suffer because of a lack of coordination in terms of implementation of those projects? Because you don't have a global plan. So did you think about uh, uh, plan before the end of your first term. Thank you. Uh, let me answer the last question first. Uh, the Brussels conference is predicated on a strategy. We're not going to ask the donors to give us funds just like that. We have to convince them about what we're going to do with the money that they're going to give us. Is this consistent with some kind of a logical plan? Is there a plan, as you suggest? This is uh, our strategy, and this strategy takes into account uh, the three years that are coming. So we might even have a five-year plan. Of course, so we cannot go to a conference uh, without uh, a plan, a plan that would allow our partners to know exactly what our vision is, what is the economic policy that we want to pursue. And if they give us those funds, uh, would we be able to meet the objectives? We're not just going to have a list of uh, disparate projects that we're going to solve uh, this crisis, which is deep. Our needs are tremendous. As you said, these are priority projects. And we think that we can leverage 
these uh, projects. Uh, and it's not going to be in three years that we're going to solve all our problems. Uh, we're going to go gradually in order to lay the foundation of our national economy, not only politically, but also economically. That's uh, what I could answer. But the Brussels conference would be predicated on a strategy, a three-year strategy. Uh, at the end, thank you for your question. You know that today there are different funding sources for development. The diaspora can be a source of uh, funding for development. And there are also skills that the country can depend on for its development. And that's why in my government, there is a ministry that uh, handles this particular sector. In other words, how can the diaspora help us? Uh, it's the Minister of Foreign Affairs who's also responsible for Central Africans overseas, how to deal with them and how to have them come back home and help us. We know that uh, a lot of our skilled fellow citizens are overseas. How can we identify them? How can we have a strategy that would allow them to come help us? For those who have resources, how can we encourage them to come invest in the country? Uh, we have to find a mechanism uh, so that uh, uh, they can use their savings in our country. These are the kinds of ideas that uh, we have asked the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to explore in terms of the role of the diaspora, because this is very important for us. You know that uh, our countries do not have uh, the schools to train uh, people, and we have had a lot of crisis, especially us, uh, and uh, our fellow citizens who are overseas are afraid to come back home, but we have to create a climate to show them that we need them. When I go back on the 29th, um, I would have some uh, interaction with them, especially those who are in Paris, because there are a lot of our fellow citizens in Paris. I can talk to them and try to motivate them so that uh, they can help uh, the country. We need them. Uh, and we need the resources, the human resources. Uh, we need uh, skills. Uh, uh, from people who can come and contribute to the development of the country. In terms of the other question, we have a constitution. You know that the constitution went into effect the day I was sworn in. So uh, my mission is to uphold that constitution, uh, this fundamental law of the country, and this is uh, the vision of the Central African people. And I think that... Uh, this was clearly expressed. We suffered too much from violence in my country, and uh, we don't want to add to that violence. So be reassured uh, on that particular question. Uh, we will uphold the Constitution. Uh, you know that uh, every nation has its vision and we do respect the will of each nation, each nation's constitution. We are members of different organizations, uh, the African Union, CEMAC, uh, CAC, and these questions are topical, and we have an international vision, and we support uh, all the recommendations uh, from these different uh, organizations. Unfortunately, I just received a note telling me that we have to close it up. Uh, I first started by saying that we all feel uh, that we are all s Central Africans. We feel the same at the end, and I hope that we're going to see each other in uh, Bangui. And on that note, Mr. President, thank you very much for accepting our invitation 
and to come here and talk about the future of the Central African Republic. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everybody.